Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to design and laser cut these Magic the Gathering Final Fantasy deck boxes. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And one of the most exciting things to happen to Magic the Gathering in the last few years is the introduction of the Final Fantasy cards. I know my son was very excited about this, and uh, of course he got all the cards for his birthday, and um, I thought I'd make him a deck box to go with it. So I've made a lot of different card boxes over the years on this channel. I've made some very large ones with like a Mother of Pearl inlay that hold entire collections of cards. I've made um, ones that are designed to hold three or four decks or a small collection. But a deck box is really designed to just be the cards that you need for one night of playing Magic. And uh, so that's what this is. Now I had, this is the prototype I made. I had a little problem with this that I'll talk about in a second. And then, then this is the final version. But I had a, a store-bought deck box here that I used to get my dimensions uh, for the deck box. And it's designed to hold the cards like this. So you'd have a stack of them this way. And I was going to design it that way, but then uh, when I got to the logo, you see that the logo here is by design, it's a horizontal logo, and by the time you put it on this flap, it was very small. So I, I didn't like that. I, I wanted a bigger, a bigger logo. So I changed the orientation to this and put the flap this way, and, and, uh, and that's the approach. I did go ahead and... Uh, Still put a cut out here in the side. It makes it easy to page through the cards. And um, so this is, this is the design uh, that I'm going with for the moment. But after um, he tries it, he might not like it, and I'll change it. And that's the great thing about doing your own design is you have the power to do those kinds of changes. Now, what really makes this box special for me is it uses living hinges. And if you've been watching my channel in the last year, I've done a lot of living hinge projects. I just love it as a technique. And living hinge is a way to cut a pattern in the wood that makes it naturally flexible. And this box has two living hinges in it. So you see, you can open it all the way and, um, and just close it back up. And then the, uh, it has a magnet underneath here that holds the flap shut. Now the problem I had with this in my prototype is that this is an inlay. I did a, a light, very light colored inlay on the dark uh, stain here. And I thought that I would protect it with clear UV resin. And I applied a coat of resin. But after the resin was down, the inlay released a lot of tiny little bubbles which didn't go away and it made this foggy. So that was not a good final finishing technique. What I did here is, well, I changed the color of the inlay to just experiment with this reddish color, but then I put masking tape over the hinge here and put on uh, several coats of a triple thick glaze I just sprayed on. And that's enough to protect it, but it gives it a very nice finish. So I think that's the way I'm gonna go uh, uh, in the future. So what I'm going to talk about today is how I design these, how I laser cut them, a little bit about assembly and finishing, and I'm going to talk about all of that in this episode. Let's start with the design. The first thing I did was find a nice clean black and white version of the logo and ran that through an image trace in Illustrator. And then I have to turn it into two versions, an outline red version for cutting the inlay and then that solid black version for doing the engraving of the pocket. In my drawings, I always use green as reference images just to, so I can figure things out. In box drawings, I always put the sides next to each other so I can see how they're gonna fit together. In the center here is the bottom and there's the front and the back. And that's going to be a very important distinction. I'm using an eighth inch grid and all of my tabs are a half inch wide and an eighth inch deep. That's because my wood is an eighth inch thick. Each side has two or three tabs distributed equally across the spacing. 
Sometimes the tabs stick out and sometimes there are slots that are receiving tabs. In this view, the back is extending up off of the page, so you'll see the rest of that later. What makes this design tricky is that this back has to extend all the way across the back and it goes up the side, around the curve, across the top, back down the front curve, and down the outside of the front. Now normally in a box I make my pieces symmetrical so both sides are the same, but here I can't because this front piece here has to actually be inset into the sides so that when this comes around it can fold over it. So the front and back edges of the sides are different and each side is a reflection of the other side. This is what the cut sheet looks like and now you can see that full back panel, what it looks like. Here's where the two living hinges are and that panel is laid out in this orientation for a specific reason. And that's because the, those hinges are more flexible if they're in a particular orientation to the grain of the wood. And you can learn more about that in my living hinge video. And once again, those two sides are actually different from one another. I cut this on my WeCreate Vision 20 watt blue diode laser. The wood is 1 8 inch thick basswood. And even though that logo is in the drawing right now, I did not send it to the cutter. I suppressed it because I didn't think this was going to work the first time, and that's the longest part of the cut is the engraving. And in fact, it did not work the first time, so that was a smart decision. So the laser cutter did the hinges first, then it did the rest of the parts, and then I could take those parts and dry fit them together I learned I had a problem, that's how I discovered I needed to inset the front and I needed to redesign and recut the pieces. I also had to make the hinges themselves bigger uh, than what you see here, so it actually took a couple of passes to get this right. So once everything was fitting together, I put the back part in and used the camera to position the logo on it and just did the engraving. It took a couple of minutes to deep engrave enough for the inlay. I bought this box of inlay in 2018 and, and I still have a lot of different options available in there to use. I got it on Amazon, it's still available and a great way to get a big variety of veneer. I lay my sheet of veneer on top of an uncut portion of scrap wood so that when it cut out the logo I wouldn't lose the little pieces down into the machine. I also turned off the air assist. This way you just lift that board out and you put the little pieces in a safe place like this box so that you don't lose them. Now for assembly. I love to use this Min Wax wood finish. I particularly like the Jacobian color stain because it's the same color as the edges of the cut wood. It also doesn't gum up living hinges. So after sanding off that little bit of smoke there around the logo, I just wipe it on, wipe it off, and it dries very quickly. And just to be on the safe side, I like to sit those up and bend those hinges a little bit while it's drying. I use wood super glue for assembly, and I can put this part of it together, but I leave the back off because I have a lot of work to do here on the logo. So this is the second one I did with the inlay and remember I said I did an experiment with resin. I'll show you that. This is clear UV resin. It's called hard type because it dries very hard. You just put uh, the right amount on and you spread it out with your silicone tool. And I'm trying to spread it up to the hinge, but of course not on the hinge. And then once it looks even, you put a UV light on it. It only took 90 seconds to cure, but unfortunately there's a lot of air in the gaps between the inlay and the engraved wood underneath, and those leach out and cause these bubbles. Because uh, UV is a fast cure method, there's not ways to get those bubbles out. So the second time I just put a mask over the hinge, used my spray can of triple thick glaze, and uh, it's fast and easy and uh, more reliable. There's also a nice clean edge at the hinge. I tried a couple of different magnet solutions, but this is where I ended up. 
I use these six millimeter by one millimeter magnets. I engraved a two millimeter deep pocket on the front panel and I glued one of the magnets in there. When it was completely dry, I put a second one on, put a drop of glue on the back of it and shut the lid carefully and held it tight. This approach guaranteed that the polarity was correct and that the positioning of the other magnet was perfect. I plan on applying a couple more clear coats to the assembled box so that the edges of the box are sealed as well. I'll probably use a satin finish. I have a lot of new projects I'm working on. I'll be covering those in the upcoming weeks. Please, if you're interested, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when a new video is released.